Should we do the obvious question first? Did you really leave the album on a laptop? No. Right. One, I haven't got a laptop. <laughs> one, I don't possess a laptop. Uh, secondly, I haven't been to the Grouch Show for uh, at least two years. Um, a fiction. Uh, your whole thing's a fiction, to be honest with you. <laughs> All right, then. So we're not wasting any time here. This is only a year since Humans. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, this record's quite different in the sense that it's just me singing on it. So it's just like, it's just me singing. Was this a conscious effort to... Well, I didn't, well, the, the, when I say it's just me singing, I mean, it's not just me not singing. Not just you got, singing. That happens sometimes. It's sort of, I mean, this record was sort of, I don't know, I just wanted to add a lot more. I suppose because I hadn't sung much on the last record, like hardly at all. And mm. it was so, so sort of different in its kind of presentation. You know, it was more of a sort of a night somewhere on earth when something happened mm. kind of record. It wasn't kind of a record just coming kind of sort of directly from one perspective. But this one, I suppose, is much more of that because it's, it's me and it's me kind of singing from elevated positions in cities and out in the wilderness in America last autumn. What do you mean by elevated positions? I mean exactly that, position where I'm elevated and I can see... Uh, the environment that I'm in. Because the now now would insinuate that it's it's very much a record about the present. Yeah. And from one, an elevated position. One would say that if um, if humans was an emotional, a political and emotional record. Yeah. Is this? This is emotional stroke political, not political stroke emotional. <laughs> I do two things. This is this this is the latter. I don't know. I mean, it's just another record, really. We got the power for that. Is it a positive record then? Yeah, or... I think so. Okay. I think so. Even despite... Everyone seems to say it is. Everyone who's listened to it so far has said that. Yeah. No, I think it is. I think it is. I think it is. I think in the sense that it's... Yeah, I think it really it really helps for its sense of its own world. The now now, the world of the now now is, is really strong because it's one voice on the record. Uh, and that wouldn't be unusual normally... You know, if I said it was one voice and I was talking about a Blur record, and we'll go, well, of course, it's just you're the singer. But on, but on Gorillaz, that never was really the sort of the orthodoxy. Mm. It was always kind of whatever, you know, would made, made a Gorillaz. I don't know. I just wanted to make another record. And I wanted to make it quickly. I wanted it to be a real response to something I was feeling at that moment, hence the title. Uh, and what were you feeling? I was feeling uh, that... You know, in a sense, I was becoming isolated from things. You were? No, I can't, not me, it's 2D, isn't it? The, the reason that I was pursuing that is that we used to use the word isolation and yeah. your Brit speech was very much, it was, it was, it was warning about the, the, the perils of isolation. And yes, was, and I, mean, people... I mean, unfortunately, unfortunately, that was isolation <laughs> as opposed to isolation. And that was only because it's two and a half hours before you have to go and pick up an award if you're getting an award. You don't know you're getting an award. So, you know, two and a half hours sitting down, it doesn't translate being drunk on television. It just doesn't. Because, the, yeah, the... There, was no, there was no one else from my generation there. I was just, a, oh, I was like a sort of <laughs> minuscule island in a sea of, of, of younger people, which is fine. I don't mind that. But, uh, you know what I mean? It, back in the day, everyone would have had a drink. Before we get to the single, I mean, yeah, because that, that speech was very much interpreted as an anti-Brexit speech. Yes, I suppose so. Well, yeah, I, you know, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of Brexit. I'm, I just don't think that any decision uh, about the, the, the sort of uh, the future and well-being of, of, of a whole country, a lot of countries, uh, can, can be decided on something as indecisive as... As uh, as the percentage that there was, and you say, you know, that all that is, is the beginning of a conversation. It's not like suddenly, right? This is the will of the, but the will of the people. What does what does that mean on 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 that kind of ratio? That's the will of the people that day. The will of the people could be different the next day. It may stay the same, but you've got to at least check whether that's the case. You can't just assume that 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 that, that snapshot in time represents everything because it doesn't you know it's the beginning of a conversation fine but it's not 
it's not the end of that conversation by any sense. So, yes, I would ask for a second referendum. We need to talk. There's, there's, there's some terrible kind of sort of divisions, and it's the same in America as well, and which is where this record really kind of has, has its genesis from. It's not even really thinking about, 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 about this country at all. Okay. So they're, 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 they're not connected, actually. It's you know, more... I'm, I'm talking to you as a, as a citizen yeah. there. I'm not talking to you about the record. So okay. just make that distinction, please. No, I was, just, I was just trying to tally whether those America and Britain's current increasingly isolationist viewpoint is something that has informed the record. For well, I think to a, yes, it has to a degree, yeah, but I wouldn't want to make that, that the sort of predominant trope of this particular piece. Humility, the quality of having a modest or low view of one's importance. <laughs> I knew this was coming. <laughs> Has anyone said yes, that? Yes, I think it's no, no, but 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 it's only day one, you know. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, it's a lovely word, though. And, yeah, um, I just, yeah, I just, I, I don't know what, why I felt that was. Uh, it, it was always called humility that song from when I first wrote it on Garage Band. It's always been that tune, and uh, uh, it's it's developed a little bit, but it's basically, I don't know, it's just something about the melody of it that that, that that connects me to that word. I don't necessarily think that the lyrics are necessarily connected to that word, but they are informed by that word. I sound a bit like sort of Zoolander there, don't I? <laughs> I don't know his work, but I like the idea that, that he makes it. <laughs> I've never read his books, but I really respect the fact he's written them. Exactly. Six music. I've got George Benson and Snoop Dogg and uh, Jamie Principal again. So he's he's on the sec second album. In a row, which is quite rare. I think the only other people who have done that was Della Soul. Yeah. How do you how did you come into contact with George Benson? Because that's amazing. Uh, I rang him up. I mean, how does was, that call go? It went well. <laughs> I mean, it's Obviously. Like, it's hey George, how you doing? <laughs> Let's have a cocktail at some point. I mean, normally I like to 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 actually hang out in person mm -hmm. and um, work it through that way. But I mean, that wasn't po possible because partly because of the the speed we were making the record and also geography. Uh, but we had a good conversation and, you know, he just went in there and he felt it. And put it this way, I hoped that he would he he, he would deliver that for us. Because I really... But you can't say, can you deliver, can you do that? You know what I mean? It's I not, want you to be really George Benson-y. I know, I know, I know, I know. You can't, <laughs> can't really do that. It's got to be how someone's feeling at that moment. But, you know, thankfully, it, for me in particular... He's working with Snoop as much fun as one would appear working with Snoop would be. Yeah, I mean, he's amazing. There aren't many people like Snoop in the world. He's basically a Gorillaz member without needing the drawings in many yeah. ways. Yeah, um, well, he's, um, he's just completely himself and that sort of develops a little bit each year. Something else be becomes assimilated to, you know, and he's like, He's kind of got his fingers in a lot of pies. This is true. He really has. But he's always himself in them, so he's identifiable in such a sort of mad way that, you know what I mean? It's so like extraordinarily iconic individual. And an individual, he's like, he really does do his own thing. He's not, he's not following anybody else's torch, <laughs> that one. Basically, the, 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 he's moulding the whole world into a snoop yeah. kind of sort of shape. Which good, is why not? It's a good shape for it. Yeah, exactly. Gorillas in the boss doll, planet of the apes. So Murdoch's gone, and you've we, we we've employed Ace. Yeah, so this uh, is from the Powerpuff Girls. Yeah, so yes, it's happened. It's this, happened, guys. <laughs> it's is, actually happened. I'm glad you've noticed. This is a crossing the beams. This is cross. Uh, this is cross pollination of two cartoons. We've lost a character. We've lost a band member because he's in prison. Right. We needed a bass player. 
Ace happened to have a sort of certain kind of sort of spiritual connection with Murdoch, especially in Jamie's Jamie's mind. Mm -hmm. And we were massive fans of of the Powerpuff Girls when they came out. The energy of that cartoon was really was really cool, and uh, you know, kind of know know the creator of it. No, it was a very organic thing. Is my point? You know, what does so he bring to the band? He's like. I don't know, he's sort of, uh, I like his hair. <laughs> his hair sort of, it's kind of sort of reassuringly receding. I mean, it's always ludicrous to ask anyone when they're talking about a new project to ask what else they've got on, but with you it's kind of, it makes sense. We have a well, run... I just finished a new Good Band the Queen record. You see, we had this running joke on The Breakfast Show that you do so much that it ma it's making everyone else look bad. <laughs> Basically, the amount Sugs of work. told me that. I bumped into him <laughs> on a train, and he'd obviously had a, a nice afternoon in the pub, and he got on the train, and the uh, first thing he said to me, he said, he said, you make us all look bad. <laughs> I didn't quite understand what he meant, but um, now you're the second person to say that, so... Fine company. I, it's not my intention. Is I'm, that try, done? I'm trying to make people feel OK, <laughs> you know, at least. You do. <laughs> the music does. The... the Proliferacy, prolifer the, the proliferation. Isn't? Yeah. I don't know. Prof right. Anyway. Pro Profligacy. Profligacy. There you go. Hey. Just, so good luck. High fives to you and me for actually getting that together collectively. You see, that's what this country needs. We need to we need to communicate and do things together, not apart. Good band the Queen finished. Yes. Right. Yes, finished. Very excited about Paul, that. Paul well. uh, on board. Everyone same same. Every, everything's exactly the same. Pro uh, produced this time by Tony Visconti. Oh. So it's got a, another little sort of twist to it. What else? I'm not allowed to give the title, am I? Nah, it's silly. What else is on the platter? Uh, we've got a record that we made in uh, January in uh, South Africa. Oh, right. Who's that? Uh, that well, that's an Africa Express kind oh, of sort great. of. But that's got Getz, um, Moonchild, Boko, Rest in Peace, Pate, Gruff. Mahala Queen, Mahalia Queen's amazing. Uh, yeah, Otim from Uganda. Fantastic, it's going to be a brilliant record. It's really, really, really. Yeah, basically, you've got three records coming out this year in one form or another. He's making us look bad, Damon. <laughs> no, I just, I just had a busy couple of months, you know. I think, I think maybe no more music to be made, only played for the rest of the year. Right. And then um, next year I'm doing something else, but I can't talk about that at the moment. Sure. Well, well, hopefully I'm doing something else. I'm just starting to get embarrassed about talking about it. It's like, <laughs> it makes me look, feel like I'm a bit odd or something. <laughs> I'm like, it's good. Can I, can I just say one thing for yes. anyone who goes, who has a problem with that, for whatever reason, right? All I do is I get up in the morning, I go to the studio, first thing in the morning, like 10 o'clock, I work until half four, five o'clock, five days a week, that's it. I don't work in holidays, but that's all I've ever done. I'm not. I don't work at night. I don't work in the evenings. I, I wasn't having a go. I'm don't happy. Work a week. I, don't, I'm happy. I promise you. I I'm don't happy do it. about it, Damon. That's <laughs> good to me apologise. <laughs> making me feel bad for making music, which is not. <laughs> it's not fair. It's if not... I if, without that, I am nothing. I am just a husk. I'm a middle-aged husk. It's lovely to speak to you. Thank you so much. <laughs> that's a pleasure. <laughs>